Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to be looking at pie charts, okay? And it says a pie chart is a circular diagram, right? Similar to a pizza, which is another way of illustrating statistical information. The circle is divided into two sectors, similar to slices of pizza, of varying sector angles or areas. Each sector or area is directly proportional to the magnitude of information that it is representing. Cool? So if we look at this uh, pie chart here, it's looking really nice. Uh, you have a big green section here. Uh, let's say green uh, may represent money in this case, right? Pink may represent items in the store, right? Let's just uh, pretend that this is color-coded based on uh, information for our business. So pink may pink may actually represent items in the store. Green may, green may make, represent cash on hand for a company. Yellow may represent um, bills, right? Red may represent um, your customers. And blue ray may represent your pot potential customers, right? Or whatever the case may be. So essentially, uh, that's what a pie chart is. It's basically a chart where you have these varying degrees of sections in a in a in a 360 degree triangle, and you need to um, use this pie chart to explain what those parts mean in comparison to the others, right? All right. So the advantage of using a pie chart is the fact that it shows how a whole quantity is divided into parts and what size though those parts are with respect to the whole, right? So cool, so we're gonna be looking at an example. All right, guys, great. So we're gonna look at a real life example of a pie chart and let's get right into it, okay guys? It says the table below shows the point standings at the end of sports day for six houses at Campion College. And the name of the houses are Gonzaga, Xavier, Regis, Loyola, Casca, and Bellamin, right? And these are the point standings. Okay, um, clearly Regis is the winner. Uh, that's the house I was in. So awesome. And when you add up all the points, um, you should get a certain number of points. So it says here, calculate the total number of points for all the houses. So all you have to do is add these guys. And when you add these, you should actually get um, the total as 750, which is the total for all houses. And it says determine the sector angle that will represent the number of points from each house. Um, and this is this should also say in the pie chart, right? Because in the pie chart, each each house is represented by a sector, right? Okay, so what we actually have to do is we have to calculate the sector um, for each house in terms of the number of points that they gained. So for the first one, which is Gonzaga, right? It would actually be 175 over 750. And I'm going to multiply this by 360. Why is it 360? Remember for a circle, it's 360 degrees. And we need to find just the sector of the circle, right? So that's why we multiply it by 360. Cool. And we're going to end up getting, the answer should be 84 degrees. Cool. So for B, which is Xavier, we should actually get 75 over 150, over 750, sorry, 75 over 750 multiplied by 360 which gives us 36 degrees, then C would be Regis, right? Which is 180 over 750 multiplied by 360, which should give us 86.4 degrees. Then for D, it's actually for Loyola, which is equal to 140 over 750 multiplied by 360, which should be equal to 67.2 degrees. 
then E is Casca, which is equal to 100 over 750 multiplied by 360, which should be equal to 48 degrees. And the last one, you see the EF is actually for Bellamin, for Bellamin, which is actually 80 over 750 multiplied by 360, right? All right, cool. So this would end up being, right, it would actually end up being 38.40 degrees. Cool. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw the circle, right? We're going to draw the pie chart for this example. Cool. And what we would actually do in the case where we actually had the circle, we would genuinely just use our protractor and we would just draw the angles based on the degrees that are given. So for the first one we're going to use is 84 degrees. So we know that's almost 90 degrees, but not 90 degrees. So it's about this in particular. Then the next one is 36 degrees, which should be about about this amount, right? Then the next one is 86.4 degrees. Um, and that should be about here, about 90 degrees, but not almost, right? Almost 90 degrees. And the next one is 67.2 which should be about this here. And then we should have 48 and 38.4. So in this case, I'm pretty sure this would probably, let me just do an estimate here. I think this would probably give us the 48 and the other would give us 38.40, right? Um, and what we would do, guys, we would use a protractor in real life, but here represents the 84 point, the 84 degrees, right? Then here represents the 36 degrees. Here represents the 86.4 degrees. Then here represents 67.2 degrees. Then here represents 48 degrees and here represents uh, 38.40 degrees. Cool. All right. So we've done the pie chart and this pie chart um, shows us which sector um, is really the dominant sector. So obviously the two, the two uh, teams that dominated were Gonzaga and Regis, um, which is how it was in my days. Uh, and the close by was Loyola, which is how it was in my days as well. Um, and that's how we use um, pie charts. We basically use them to see, okay, who has the bigger sector? Um, how are things in comparison to the other um, that we're involved in? All right, guys. Okay, so cool. So we're going to finish up here, and we're going to move on to line graphs. Okay, guys, so I'll see you in the next lecture. All right, that's it. And I'll see you in the next lecture. And remember to do your best and God will do the rest.